Today in the Hack Shack, we're going to work on a Pentax K1000 that needs some light meter repair. Welcome to Hack A Week. So yeah, back in the Hack Shack after quite a while away, finally got settled in here. We are living in Asheville, North Carolina now. Whole new shop. Um, basically what I've done was took my old business shop and condensed things down. Then I took our garage that we used to have that was three times as big as this garage, plus the workshop, condensed all of that down and somehow managed to cram it into this small space. Anyway, what we're gonna work on here today is a Pentax K1000 that my brother gave to me, um, my brother of 80, two years and uh, he was a photographer in the Air Force, big into photography, gave me my first real camera, which is uh, a Kodak twin lens reflex. It took 620 film and that was in the 70s when he gave it to me. You could still buy 620 film then, not anymore. Now you have to take 120 film and wind it onto a 620 roll. That's another video coming up. We've got some vintage camera stuff we're gonna play with. But he had these two kicking around, and um, this one I think he picked up from somebody cheap. It was in a fire. Um, it still works. It didn't really hurt anything really bad, except you can see some of the heat got to uh, the anodizing on this lens. This is a really inexpensive lens. It's, um, what is it, in uh, Albinar. Uh, they sell for like 20 to 30 bucks all over the place on eBay. And um, it's an okay lens. It's a zoom lens. Um, I forget what it goes to and from. Getting older. I need glasses now all the time up close. That's life. Let's see. Uh, it is a mm -hmm, 75 300. Um, like I said, it's, it's adequate. Um, it works, but it's uh, what's its F rating? 5.6. So it doesn't let a lot of light through. Anyway, uh, so yeah, this is this is it right here. And uh, if you can see through the viewfinder, you would see that the needle is not moving. Of course, I checked the battery first. The battery is okay. So it's probably a mechanical or a connectivity issue, but to get at it, we need to remove the top of the camera. And I've got some special little tools for that. And um, we're gonna get you on the overhead and get started. Okay, so here we go. I've got this really cool screwdriver set I picked up on Amazon for a pretty reasonable price, and um, it is a very precision set. This one right here is 0.6 millimeters wide. Little itty bitty thing. Will this focus? Yes, look at that. It is so tiny. That's a 0.6, and then it goes 0.8, 1, etc., all the way on up to uh, 2 millimeter flat head and then the Phillips go really really small as well but um, anyway what we've got to do is take this top off so to do that we need to take off the knob for the shutter speed um, this winding lever has to come off the rewind knob has to come off then there's some screws in the top and that all lifts off after you get all that out of the way. This little bugger right here is a left-hand thread screw that you need a special little spanner for. You see how it's got two little holes in it? And it's a left-hand thread. And what worked for me was this really micro set of uh, lock ring players that I found at a Napa auto parts store. And I filed them a bit. And look at that. It fits right in there. So let's get that off first. And as I mentioned, it's a left hand thread, so it turns in a clockwise manner to take it off. Little tool would be a lot easier if it was straight up and down. So we're going to hold we need to get this screw off and it takes a special spanner that's got two little pegs on it 
this worked okay for me. This is a little set of uh, snap ring pliers and they fit right in those holes nicely. So it is a right hand thread on this one. Some of these are left hand thread. Um, it would be worth it to look up the specs before you go tearing into it and possibly break something. So this is going to come off just like any other nut or bolt screw. It's going to turn counterclockwise. I'm going to just kind of hang on to everything. You want to rotate this to the bulb setting. Everything that I have read about taking these apart mentions that and I think it's to relieve some spring tension possibly. And there is a spring under that so be ready for that to pop up. I'm going to lift that off. Put that aside in my parts tray and there's a spring that comes off into the parts tray and then this lifts up and there is a little locating pin two of them one is right there one is right there so when it goes back on you know where to line it up properly all right now we need to take off this little black knob and it's held on with three very small screws. Can you see that one right there on the side? Uh, okay, yeah, there's three of them. So we got to get those off. This is why I bought a very tiny screwdriver set. These are really small. So small that if you drop it on the floor, you're pretty screwed. <laughs> I mean, it's the size of a grain of sand. Another one, just to give you an idea of just how tiny that thing is. That's tiny. It's a little set screw. And so you just remember that the window points toward the front of the camera. Pretty sure it goes back together only one way because these are not at perfect thirds away from each other. So we got the three screws out. Then we can lift off the cover. Now there's another one right there. And it is a right hand thread. So we need to get that off. We need to find the proper size screwdriver for that. You need to hold the numbered dial as you do this. Here is another special fastener. See those two slots? There is one right there, and then there's another one here, and a tiny washer. Let's not lose that. Let's get that out of there. So now I need to loosen that ring. I'm good. Yep, there it goes. that comes. Now we lift this off. Guess what? Now we have more screws and these are Phillips screws. There's one, two, three of them. So we pretty much have run in through all of the possible fasteners <laughs> uh, that we can find. So let's get these three out. So this ring now has to rotate about a quarter of a turn and um, that's called the counter dial housing assembly by the way, all of this business. So let's see, I'm just going to give it a push and it should rotate around where I can lift it off. There we go. Just like that. Now, this comes off. And 
this plastic washer comes off. That takes care of everything here. Now we need to get the wind back lever off. So let's pull that up, pop the top off. This is pretty straightforward. All you need is a screwdriver to hold this down. Just lock it in place with the screwdriver. And it is also a right hand thread. So off it comes. And now we're going to use my snap ring spanner wrench thingy and take this off. And screws. We're down to just some screws now. So we have one, two, three Phillips screws. Let's get those out. These are different size screws as well, so you need to keep track of them. The one on this end is bigger than these two. You'll know right away when you're putting it back together because obviously the larger one will not fit and the smaller ones will just spin around and round. I think that that's everything. And the cover should lift off. And indeed it does. And there's all the goodies. You didn't know there was electronics in there, did you? Well, you probably did if you've worked on cameras at all, I suppose. Uh, but let's take a little closer look at what's going on in here. Uh, looks like there might be a little bit of corrosion going on on that little trace right there. That's not good. I need to investigate what that's about. And the uh, meter i got to find out where the meter is. I think that's it right there. Uh, maybe. Got to dig into it a little further. But here's where things get really wild and crazy with taking anything further apart. As you can see, cameras are a lot like watches. There's a lot of gears and timer mechanisms and things inside. And if you're very careful about it and you keep track of where everything is and um, you have some tools, you can do your own repairs. It's a bit intimidating when you first get in there, of course, but we all have cell phone cameras now that we can take pictures of stuff as we go along. So now what I'm going to do is a little exploring here and see if I can find just where that meter is and see if we can discover why it's not working. So after a bit of looking around on the internet, uh, I have discovered that you need to take off the prism and the light meter lives down underneath there. The prism's held on with these two springs and there are a couple of screws on the side that pinch it and hold it in place. This piece of trim needs to get out of our way. So we're going to loosen these first. Hello, there it comes, okay. So there's the meter. The needle to the meter is right there. And the actual meter is right here. That is that is the, uh, the winding for the meter. The meter is basically, it's a volt meter. All of these meters, be it a VU meter, a light meter, any kind of a needle sweep type meter, um, even an old volt meter, they act like like a motor in a way. There is an inductor and then there's magnets and depending on the voltage going into it, it offsets from the magnet a given amount and the needle moves. They're, they're pretty straightforward. But we need to figure out why we don't have uh, a meter working in this right now. I've got the battery in the battery holder. The cover is off. I'm gonna just push it in with the positive probe of my meter if I can hold it in place and then take a poke at the black wire 
and see if we see voltage that way. That's going to tell me if this battery compartment cover is possibly not grounding. Well, I shouldn't say grounding, but making connectivity. Okay, there we go. Let's see, what do we got? Still reading partial. This is so tricky to do because as I push in on it, it's trying to move the camera. I need three hands. Every maker's secret wish. Give me three hands. I'm still only reading 0.5. That's strange. I don't get it. We need to take the bottom cover off. The two screws on the outer parts of this are larger than the one in the middle. So be sure you keep those separate. There's the battery holder and it's got three screws that hold it in place. Aha, look at that. I just pulled that wire and it's broken. So there is the problem right there. That's why my meter isn't working. Well, I think I have gotten it, but looking at it and getting after it with a magnifying glass here to see it. Oh man, it is really corroded. It's, you know, copper, but it's turned black. It is absolutely corroded. This thing had a battery leak and it went bad. Uh, so that may explain why I had this corrosion up on the top. It's not on, it's not on that battery lead, but I suppose it could have worked its way there. I don't know. I think what I'll do is just twist it to the existing wire. Because that'll, um, it'll kind of hold it for a little bit. And then put a bit of, uh, super glue on it. Hit it with the kicker. And then see if we can pull the whole mess up through here. So let's get this twisted together. Okay. Now we're going to straighten it back out. And get out the Apex glue. Love this stuff. That's the kicker. The glue label fell off, but um, there it is. Afix. Afix 706. Good stuff. Um, watching a video by Adam Savage and discovered this stuff. It's great. I love it. It does tend to thicken up in the bottle um, over six or eight months. If you don't use it up, it does get a little thick, but not a big deal. It's still usable. So a little bit of the kicker. Let that sit a minute or two. And then we'll see if we can pull that wire up through and resolder it to everything. All right, the light meter is back in. That was a struggle. I ended up having to take off this circuit board, get that out of my way and go back in there very, very carefully. I did bend the needle a couple times, but it's okay. It's in there. Um, gonna stick a battery back in and see if it works. It works again. Uh, the battery's back in, cleaned up that battery compartment a bit. It had some funky connections. Basically it wasn't getting a good ground right here as well. So took care of that. So it does work now and uh, in hindsight, I can see it would have been a lot easier just to remove these four screws on this frame that holds the entire uh, prism assembly in place. And guess what? It also carries with it the meter. Would have been a lot easier to do it that way. So just four screws, the whole prism comes out. You have to be careful of the wiring, of course. Don't you know pull too hard and break anything. But um, we can put this thing back together now because the light meter works again. Yay. That's it. It's back together.
All right, we have a working camera again with a light meter. Hello. Cool. This K1000 reminds me a lot of a Miranda 35 millimeter that I used in high school. That's where I got started in you know, like real photography with a 35 millimeter was in high school on the yearbook staff in seventh grade back in, oh God, 1975, I guess, four or five, something like that. Um, but it's just a good heavy duty camera. Uh, the K1000 is kind of known as a, as a student camera. It's just a good workhorse of a camera. Um, I'll probably find some other lenses for it, maybe on eBay. And I've been shooting a lot of 120 film, black and white, two and a quarter format, medium format, lots of fun. I've got a mini dark room set up here in the uh, workshop. You can't see it, it's on the other side of the camera. We'll get into that in some more videos because I've got some twin lens reflex cameras uh, from the 50s that I've been shooting pictures with. I'm gonna get some film for this and get some black and white going with this as well, do some developing and printing right here at home. So maybe we'll get into that in a future video. So it's good to be back on YouTube again, and uh, I have now decided to start working four days a week, and on Fridays, I'm gonna focus on getting some videos back online. So maybe it'll be hack a week again, like it used to be. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, Smile.